In ancient Israelite culture, head coverings had specific meanings and implications for married women, reflecting broader societal and religious norms. Here's a detailed exploration of what wearing head coverings meant for married women in this context. One symbol of marital status. 1.1 mark of respect and modesty. Cultural norms, in ancient Israelite society, head coverings were a sign of modesty and respect. For married women, this practice signified their adherence to societal expectations of modesty and their commitment to their marital role. Veils and headscarves, married women often wore veils or headscarves to cover their hair in public and during social or religious activities. This practice was not just about personal modesty but also about adhering to cultural norms that delineated the boundaries of female modesty and propriety. 1.2 Significance in Social Contexts Public identification, head coverings served as a visible marker of a woman's marital status. In many ancient cultures, including Israelite society, a married woman was expected to wear a head covering to indicate her status and respectability. Cultural consistency, the practice was consistent with broader Near Eastern customs, where head coverings for married women were a common feature. 2. Religious and Ritual Significance 2.1 Biblical References Genesis 24,65, the story of Rebekah covering herself with a veil upon meeting Isaac illustrates the use of head coverings as a sign of modesty and respect, which can be extended to married women as well. Although the passage does not explicitly state that Rebecca was married at that time, it reflects the practice associated with women of status. Numbers 518, in the ritual of the suspected wife, the uncovering of the woman's head was a symbolic act. This ritual underscores the significance of head coverings in ritual contexts and implies their importance in distinguishing between different states of marital fidelity and purity. 2.2 Religious Practices Priestly garments, although the head coverings of priests described in Exodus 28-36-38 are not directly related to married women, they reflect the broader significance of head coverings in religious contexts. The principle of covering one's head in sacred or ceremonial contexts can be seen as analogous to practices among married women. 3. The New Testament Perspective 3.11 Corinthians 11-2-16 Paul's instructions, in the New Testament, Paul's instructions regarding head coverings in 1 Corinthians 11 provide a direct reference to the practice for women during worship. Paul connects the practice of wearing head coverings to concepts of authority and respect within the church community. This passage reflects an extension of cultural practices into the early Christian community, where head coverings were seen as a sign of respect for divine order and marital status. Cultural and Theological Implications Paul's teachings underscore that head coverings were not merely cultural artifacts but carried theological significance related to gender roles and spiritual propriety. Four Broader Cultural and Social Implications 4.1 Symbol of Authority and Hierarchy Social Hierarchy In many ancient Near Eastern cultures, including Israelite society, head coverings were associated with social hierarchy and authority. For married women, wearing a head covering was a way of aligning with societal norms and acknowledging the social order. 4.2 Contrast with Uncovered Hair Symbolic contrast, uncovered hair in public or religious settings could be seen as a sign of dishonor or improper behavior. For married women, covering their hair was a way of adhering to societal expectations and avoiding public shame. 5. Conclusion In summary, for married women in ancient Israel, wearing head coverings was deeply intertwined with cultural, religious, and social norms. It symbolized modesty, respect, and adherence to marital status and societal expectations. The practice reflected broader Near Eastern customs and carried both public and private significance, marking married women's roles within their communities and in religious contexts. Are no more New Testament books th8 mentioned it besant Paul what about the apocryphal New Testament and the Siddhagrapha books? Chat GPT In addition to Paul's letters, the New Testament itself does not contain further direct references to head coverings for women. However, exploring the apocryphal New Testament and Pseudepigrapha can provide additional context and insights. 
Here's an overview of relevant texts from these categories. 1. Apocryphal New Testament 1.1 The Gospel of the Hebrews Description This Gospel, a part of the apocryphal texts, does not explicitly mention head coverings for women. However, understanding its context helps to see how early Christian communities might have continued or adapted Jewish customs. 1.2 The Gospel of Mary, Magdalene Description This text focuses on Mary Magdalene's teachings and her role among Jesus' followers. While it does not specifically address head coverings, it provides insight into early Christian views on gender roles and practices, which can be useful for understanding the broader cultural and religious context. 1.3 The Acts of Paul and Thecla Description This apocryphal text describes the life of Thecla, a female disciple of Paul. Thecla is portrayed as wearing a head covering in certain scenes, reflecting the practice of modesty and religious piety. This depiction aligns with the cultural expectations of the time. 2. Sudepigrapha 2.1 The Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs Description While not a direct reference to head coverings, this text offers insights into the moral and social teachings of various patriarchs. It reflects on societal norms and religious practices, which may indirectly inform our understanding of head coverings. 2.2 The Assumption of Moses Description, this pseudepigraphic work does not specifically address head coverings but provides context on Jewish beliefs and practices. It contributes to understanding the cultural milieu in which head coverings were a significant practice. 2.3 The Book of Enoch Description, this text focuses more on apocalyptic visions and does not address head coverings directly. However, its descriptions of angelic and divine order help frame the broader religious context in which head coverings had symbolic meaning. Contextual Insights 3.1 Early Christian and Jewish Practices Cultural Continuity The Apocryphal New Testament and Sudepigrapha often reflect Jewish cultural and religious practices. Head coverings were likely a continuation of Jewish customs into early Christian practice, even if not directly mentioned in every text. 3.2 Symbolism and Social Norms Modesty and Authority, the symbolism of head coverings, as indicated in Pauline texts, reflects broader norms of modesty and authority. The apocryphal and pseudepigraphal texts often illuminate these practices by showing how early Christians grappled with Jewish traditions and adapted them to their new religious context. Conclusion while the Apocryphal New Testament and Sudepigrapha do not extensively address head coverings directly, they provide valuable context and support the understanding of head coverings as a practice with deep cultural and religious roots. The portrayal of head coverings in texts like the Acts of Paul and Thecla aligns with the broader themes of modesty and respect found in early Christian and Jewish traditions. Understanding these texts helps to frame the significance of head coverings within the cultural and religious milieu of the time.